Now, with synthwave bass, there are basically, no pun intended, three types of basses. So you have your, you know, the famous stereotypical synthwave bass, which is the running bass, which sounds like this. <laughs> Then you've got a more of your sweep, sweeping kind of bass, right? This is like, think the theme song for Stranger Things. And then I found a third kind of bass is more of an ARP type bass. where the bass is kind of moving around more. So for my basses, a big shout out to Synth Control uh, as I'm using, again, a lot of his presets here. He's Serum presets uh, for a lot of my tracks here in this song uh, from his Synthwave and Retrowave and Outrun sample packs. These are really awesome. If you wanna check these out for yourself, you can use my affiliate links in the description below. So for my running bass here, I am using Dancing in the Dark preset here and I've got it copied and I have one that is filtered to be just the high frequencies. The other one is just the low so I can have a sub bass here. Uh, and the reason I did that was so that I could put some chorus on the higher frequency bass because um, doing stereo widening on your sub frequencies can lead to phase issues, which you don't want as you can get sounds canceling out and a whole bunch of problems that you don't want to deal with. So uh, I'm just, that's why I kind of split these out. And so together it sounds like this. And I've got a side chain type compression on here, just using one knob pumper by waves. So um, you don't have to do it this way. You can actually, you know, use side chain compression where you put a compressor on and you side chain it to the kick drum. So that every time the kick drum hits, the volume of the bass drops depending on whatever settings you set up. I've got a full tutorial on how to use side chaining. I'll have that linked in the description below. This is very common in like EDM and modern electronic music. And it's also pretty common in synthwave music these days. So I'm using that there um, to create that pumping action. And I think I use some on the pad as well during the chorus here. Now, sound design ways, if you wanna actually know how to create this running type synthwave bass. I've got another video on this. I'll have that linked in the description below or uh, also my free synthwave cookbook guide walks you through how to create this. So that is also for free that you can download in the description. If you haven't caught on yet, there's a lot of goodies in the description. Sorry if I sound like a broken record, but we are making synthwave music and records are retro. So next let's look at my verse bass here, which is kind of my ARP bass here. Uh, I just played this pattern on my, my keyboard. So let me turn the ARP off and you can hear what it sounds like. Pretty simple. And I originally had this note up here because I was just following the root notes of my chords here. So right here. Um, something I just like to do though, I like to have the final note here of my bass, have something different going on, kind of have it lead back in. So I just dropped it down here. And so that is that. And so you can hear it with the chords how it sounds. Not bad, but I just thought it was kind of boring. So I just put an ARP on here using the, the MIDI ARP plugin here in Logic. So if you, your DAW has some kind of ARP plugin, you can use that. So it's using the eighth, eighth note rate. It's going up and I'm just using the first variation here. And I'm doing a two octave range. So it adds in more notes in a higher range. So now we'll hear that. So I just thought it made it a little more interesting and fun. Plugin wise, I'm just adding a tiny bit of compression here, kind of smooth things out. Uh, and then I am using this EQ, an API style EQ. By the way, with all the EQs I'm using in this tutorial, if you want to know a free alternative, I have a complete guide on the best EQ plugins uh, for each type of EQ, because there's a bunch of different EQ types. 
and I also have free alternatives for all of these. I have that linked in the description below. But anyway, I found this really nice, um, kind of adding some kind of high mid increase here and then also increasing the base. I just thought it had a really nice flavor to it, um, especially in the low end here. It really gave a boost to the base without it sounding too muddy. And I've also adding in some subtle, you got some subtle analog um, com, um, saturation going on here because this is an analog model tool. Um, this is by Waves. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of highlight this without it in and with it in. That just sounds really nice. Um, so there's that. I've got some REQ here by Waves, kind of doing the same thing. Again, just giving another kind of layer to it because um, a digital EQ versus analog model. And then this is really big. I use this on bass a lot, the R bass. So we'll hear it without it in and with it in. So you can just hear like without it, it just sounds kind of thin. Even with my EQ, right? We've, right this is, we've already, had those two EQ plugins I showed you boosting, but it still sounds a little thin. Just really warms it up, makes the bass fatter. It's really nice. Um, and then lastly, I've got some chorus on here because this is big with synthwave music bass. Now it's retro. That's how you make a retro bass. You just throw in some chorus basically. Um, and so that is the synthwave art bass. And finally, I have got this sweeping bass. I'm using the preset odd look here from the outrun pack that synth control has um really cool again if you want to know how to create a, a a bass sweep or a sweeping style of synthwave bass then grab my free synthwave sample pack in the description and you can look at my synthwave sound design cookbook and i'm kind of just copying the same settings from my other bass with the compression with the API EQ, the R EQ. I don't have the R bass on here because I thought it sounded fine as is. I'm adding some of the magma channel strip here, um, some of the tube saturations, a tiny bit of EQ, a decent amount of compression. Um, all the comp from my running bass, I have all the same plugins on those as well. And for my bass bus here, I've got a little bit of EQ, I guess, just boosting at 220 and doing a high pass at 45 because you don't really need below 40 really hurts. Um, so I'm high passing that. Um, and then yeah, boosting at 220 a bit. And then for fun, <laughs> I threw on some more one knob plugins because I never really use these. So I felt like using it. Um, so I had some drive. thought that sounded nice. Just a little bit of grittiness. Just turn up the knob as one control. You use one knob fatter too. So I guess it makes things sound a little fatter. So I guess this is like the waves equivalent of the sausage fattener, which is so popular among EDM producers and electronic producers. And then otherwise I've got the filter for different automation that I'm doing. Basically just the first course, I have some filtering going on and one knob pumper, like I said, for when I'm doing that, which is only during the choruses. Cause I don't want my art or my sweeping bass to be pumping. That makes my verses and my bridge a little bit more, I don't know, it gives them a different feel than the choruses. When the choruses, everything's jumping. Um, it just helps give a different feel. If you found this video helpful, be sure to blow up that like button like you're Luke Skywalker attacking the Death Star. And if you want more help creating synthwave music, be sure to click the video playing on the screen right now, as this includes my full in-depth tutorial on creating a synthwave song from start to finish. With that, have an awesome day and keep creating.